All right, what's going on, guys? What is going on? Also, very impromptu stream. So y'all gonna have to let me know how it sounds. I've got y'all chat on the side, so I'm gonna check it out. But I don't know. I just uh, wanted to randomly bring up a uh, a stream about the analog uh, the analog lab or the analog lab the astro lab hopefully my mic is not going to fall down here give me a second as i fix everything up this is a little random Okay, that should be better. So yeah. You can ask anything about the Astro Lab. I'm just gonna play it for like 30 minutes, just because I have nothing better to do. like a Juno 60 patch. Now, obviously, it's a preset machine. So, you know, say you wanted to change the attack, you know, the envelopes of this. Not really possible within the, you know, the interface as it is. But, you know, you can go into, if you have the V collection and stuff, you can change it. But you have all your, like, you know, effects over here. This is chorus, so... I mean, I think the Astrolab is really something that certain people, it makes perfect sense. Other people, it's like, well, dude, I have the V collection. What are we talking about here? Um, but I just think like the breadth of instruments. I mean, I bought my V collection like right at the end of the year at like this like crazy sale. And um, I really like it. Pigments is like the best part. So you can go through all your instruments here. Obviously. I like the stage but i put that in like my my favorites already in my uh in my splits it's already in my splits but i also like this tokyo dreams patch because you have control over the filter
so yo why the fuck what's going on it's a it's a stand it's not a standalone in a synth with a selection of the various scenes. not not in the way that see here's what i would have a hundred percent i don't know how i say would have wanted but um i'll say this i think that if they had put pigments inside of this and allowed you to tweak just pigments that would have been that that would have been boss super boss you know but that's not how it works also once again i'm playing on my knees right now so i don't want anyone to judge my playing because of me literally playing on my knees right now This is very painful. I should drop a pillow down. Hold on. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. I put a pillow down. I can survive now. My like my knees and my back are killing me right now. I think it's it's this is all about the live player. Like, um, it really it really is to me about the live player. It's not as much about anybody. I mean, yes, obviously you can use it in the studio, but that's not what I personally think it's good for. Also, by the phone, let's get a new video going on the channel. A new channel, I'm waiting for it. This is also the last thing I'm doing before I go get in and out Burger. Let's see. Uh, there's some patches I haven't used, like a Selena Blade Runner Strings. Okay. Okay. What's this all about? Let's see. Get, I'm trying to get a patch with a little bit more attack. Let's, let's go to the. Let's just go to the Moog. There we go. Obviously, you can change all your stuff over here, all your effects, which is cool, you know. You can also change the splits pretty easy. I feel like that splits a little too low. I play a little higher. I typically, if I'm gonna play left hand, I play like probably up to F sharp. Eh, sometimes I play to like G sharp actually. Depends.
Let me do randomly look at my phone. Uh, just so you know, since Samurai, I'm doing this 100% because I saw your comment on my video, just so you know. And that's not a joke. I literally saw your comment about nobody's tweaking it and stuff. So here we are. And you have like, shift is your thing to change things. So one is a, FX1 is a multi-mode filter, but I'm changing that to a chorus. And turn it all the way up, just so it's, so you can hear it. I'm gonna turn the reverb. Well, I'll turn these off so you can hear the chorus better. That probably makes sense. Okay, let's see. How's that saying go? Better playing on our knees than fully played on our feet. I mean, yes, this will be like a 30 minute stream of me um, getting a back, uh, I don't know, back pain before I go and get an In-N-Out burger. Let's see what else we got here. Ring leader. I'll, I'll be honest, I am not the most, like, biggest Moog uh, mono synth fan, um, like, of those classic ones. just the phaser. See how that is? Real quick. It's pretty cool, right? I like that patch, actually. Planet Nine. I'm going to add that to my favorites because I I like that. I don't know. I like that preset. I'm just gonna maybe I'll just find a bunch I like at this point. Mm, plucked keys. Am Am eight. Oh, ooh, I like that. Let's see. Also, since Samurai. come on the channel sometime you know on the live stream they sick i know i think you're in canada so or, or at least not on the west coast
to good for pluck. Let's see about the delay on that pluck. There you go. That's it. Whoops. Phone says another fantastic example of digital synth sounding fantastic. To be honest, Arturia has was the first company that turned uh, the tide of analog sounds better. Uh, for me, I much prefer muscle memory with hardware. Yeah, you know, there's I, I would like this. There's some software that is just better for I think like the quantum is so huge and. You can never get a really non-perfunction type of a thing. Um, so it kind of sucks. You know, because you're like, oh, I'd love to have like knobs and stuff, but it's so vast. It's like, imagine pigments in a hardware synth. It's just like, that's just too much. So, you know, that's what I say. <laughs> killing me welcome to the 80s this is a juno i'm trying to look at the patch here you guys probably can't see but it's like a juno and a jupiter that's what i'm kind of seeing oh interesting that's different oh interesting it's a split patch as well so you've got, I think, Juno down here. Interesting. Interesting. And then uh, Jupiter up here. It's like a chord. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Changing the split a little lower just so I can hear. instrument knobs do something slightly different in, in each patch so you don't always get what you want that's what i'll say Ooh, thriller lead if only i knew the thriller lead it's just it's just the thriller <laughs> i'm trying to think about it i think that's like sort of what it would be Nice. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. You know. I somebody is clearly Greg Filling Gaines like played that. So let's not talk like I could ever play it. Anyways. Um Let's see. It's draw cap says, is this really for on stage or would it make sense for production? 
do you find it more inspiring than a MIDI controller plus analog lab? I mean, if you want my honest opinion on that, um, I would say, first off, I bought the collection in... I bought the collection at the end of 2023 and I I love the collection for the vast amount of instruments. Um, I got it for like $50 on this crazy sale. Um, but the thing about on stage is on stage is so much more than about like the vast amount of sound you have because you're playing a set, which is why they have these playlists in here and you can just do your playlist. But on stage is about like so much more than a large amount of sounds. And I think that this just has so many sounds. It seems like it's a sort of a strange identity crisis where I need I need to perform my best on stage and certain things about the Astrolab change that the ability to do that or ways that you're super, super, super used to it. So if it's your first time playing on stage, sure. You're probably gonna be like, Oh, I like this. I like this like scroll screen, right? Like your first, if this is like, you know, your like first few shows or kid or something or, but this is like very, very abnormal to like a player. So but in the studio, I bought my V collection and you could buy, I, I also bought the, the mini, the like, uh, the mini lab. Here, hold on. This thing. So I bought this, um, like a year ago or something. I love this. I use this all the time, but for say the hundred dollars I bought this for and the fifty dollars I bought the B collection for on a crazy sale, there's always crazy sales. I mean, it's basically the same thing, but also more because you know, you don't need, you know, you're not using every single sound all the time. And I think like these, these mini labs, these come with like um these come with like um what is the word? Um it comes with like analog lab, right? So analog lab, like free with one of these, I think. So it's kind of like, it's a tough sell for the studio, in my opinion. But anyways, sorry, I hope that answered the question. Let's see. Um, since Samurai says, I think it's for a live jam with a bunch of since running sequences, Kebu style. Um, the Astrolab for adding licks uh, add, and flavor improv on top is awesome. Knob twist, the other since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I was, let's say, let's say, because there are these people who produce a lot for artists and also play. If you are the type who plays often with the artists you produce for, this is really great for you. Um, now, can I say those people are, there's enough of those specific people to fill the niche of this synth? I guess probably not. But. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, you have your patches. Patch switching. Okay, that's what I'll talk about. Patch switching. Maybe I can explain it a bit more in this um, example. So, for patch switching. I know this is going to sound super, super crazy. But it may not seem like this patch switching is that problematic. But uh, I've played so many 
let's just call them performance specific keyboards and that tiny lag is in a sense i'll put it like this it's it's twice as slow as your go-to like live keyboard that i would that i have used hundreds of times So also, I talked about this before on the other video. Anyone who plays organ is going to be too used to draw bars. And you can't maybe see it on the screen, but there's all of the key switches down here. And it's for organ it's it's a it's too nuanced to use key switches. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little, I don't know. I'm also not a church player, so but I just know, I know. What's up, Sam? Yeah, um, Sam. <laughs> um, uh, you said, thank you for the honest about the patch changing latency. Oh, yeah. And I think if you gig, it's an instant problem, but it's being reviewed by Synth Harbor channels. Yeah, I, I mean, I was hoping more like live type people had played it. But I mean, I can exaggerate it here. You see how slow that was? Like, there is no, I know it's gonna sound, look, I think Arturia knows that maybe it's, that's just how it is. I'm just gonna, anyway. I'm gonna play up higher actually. It's just, it's, it's, that would be like, that's just a lot. That's just too, um, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, but here's the thing. It's not about the switching. I think people will obviously decide, oh, I'm just going to, you know, use playlisting, right? So they'll you'll pick patches that don't have that lag. But the fact is, I cannot name a, a commonly used stage piano that would have a lag of that type. They would just make the patches smaller. And it's, it's just, you can't tell exactly how long it's going to be between different things. And like, let's just say, let's just say you got to go to a patch and I don't know, you need a string and they want you to do like a walking bass line or something, you know, something like that. Right. You can't be like, okay, I don't know. It's just, it's just, you don't know when it's going to happen when you're playing live. And that's why live is so unpredictable and so full of energy and different. Um, so you can't say, oh, I'm going to always know that to never press that during a live performance. You're not going to know. So, but I don't know. Some people were not happy about certain aspects, but I was trying, I know everyone was going to be like, oh, just enjoy, you know, fun, fun strings patch or something but i was like you know there's gonna be people because this is meant for live people we're gonna need to know certain things like that 
So that's why I took that perspective. But anyways, um, I think the Astrolab is killer if you really want to have the sounds from the stage or from the studio in the stage. Um, and just the breadth of instruments. I mean, it's the V collection. I mean, it's, it's, it's like analog lab, but it's, you can have the V collection and use all kinds of stuff. Um, and I really like, some of these are really, really, I never use the CS80 actually. Anyways, I just wanted to jump on, do a random little little patch and tweak, answer people's questions and stuff. So we're done. I'll see you guys later tonight on the normal live stream. Okay, peace out.